Once again, welcome everyone. It is time for us to begin today. Thank you all for coming. Our topic today is using a Mac machine with Office 365. It used to be uh, in previous, I don't know if I should say versions or generations or what, it used to be that it was a very, very difficult thing to go back and forth. Um, partially just because they weren't designed with each other in mind and partially because both sides actively did some things to make it worse. Uh, but I will say that the news is much better now. So if you want or need to use Office 365 to do your work for your office, uh, but you're working from a Mac machine, that's something that's very plausible and very practical to accomplish now. Let me get some, let me get my desktop shared here. So we're gonna talk our way through some high points of this. This is not going to be a deep dive into the Mac operating system. Um, I am bilingual, I speak both Windows and Mac, but the Mac is definitely my second language. Uh, but I recognize there are good reasons for that, especially in today's situation where many people are still working from home. Uh, they may have to use a personal machine or they maybe have to quickly bounce back and forth from machine to machine, room to room. It becomes more and more likely that you're going to want or need to use your Mac for things. So let's talk about a few things that are very helpful to know about how this works. First of all, as we mentioned, they've gotten much better. Even over the last year, the interoperability has gotten much better. Um, I do have a couple of friends and colleagues that are Microsoft SharePoint people, Office 365 people, that's what they do professionally, and their primary machine is a Mac. So there are a few things that you may still need to go to a Microsoft machine, a Windows machine to do, but most things you can do on a Mac just like you would on a Windows PC. So let's talk about a few things. We're gonna start with Teams here uh, because in the past, that's where many of the complaints have been. Um, it used to be that there were many complaints that the Teams client was incredibly slow. It would constantly lock up. Those things got in much, much better in the spring of this year. Um, so in my personal experience, I find that much smoother now than it was before. What I will also mention is that there used to be some limitations in the Teams client for when you're working in a meeting. And you may still sometimes see some of those. I'm gonna show you a difference between how this works and point out a, a setting that'll be in your control if you uh, own a Mac. So if we go into Meet, I'm just gonna start a meeting here rather than join an existing one. You know, notice we come up you know, with our camera. It gives us the ability to add background filters. This may be missing in your case. We'll talk about that here in a moment, but notice it does give me that. I'm gonna turn off my mic and headphones here since I'm using them for the webinar. You'll notice it shows up here. I again get controls where I can apply those background effects if you wanna do the background blur or if you wanna pick one of these other backgrounds. All those things are possible from a Mac. Apply, there we go, um, easy to do. The other thing you can do is you can start a recording. Um, go ahead and start one, won't hurt anything. Now, when you're done with a Mac, or when you're done with a meeting, leaving it is just the same as it would be anywhere else. But I wanna show you how this may be a little different if you're joining a meeting that someone else created. You'll notice this meeting in my calendar I sent to myself from another account. And now if I join this meeting, I'll give it just a moment. You'll notice that my permissions are slightly different here. This is not a fault of the Mac client or the Mac operating system. And notice I can no longer start a recording. Okay. That's because in this meeting, I am a guest. I am not an internal user. So keep that in the back of your mind that if you find things that are not available that are disabled in Teams, especially in a meeting environment, it may be because of that. It may be because of your permission level. Um, meetings can be um, just part of a calendar and individuals, or they can be part of a team channel. So if you're the organizer, that's one level of permission, right? If it's a channel meeting, you might be an owner of the team or a member of the team. Or if you're an external user, someone in another organization invited you to the meeting, you'll likely have fewer permissions. But that's not a problem with Mac or the Teams client. Um, other things to point out that are in here and available. 
Uh, by the way, you can share your desktop in here as well. Um, but if I go and look at some of the other things that you may have gotten used to using in a PC, you'll see that it's the same idea here. So I create a new conversation in a team channel. I can still format a post, adding a subject line. This is a subject. Uh, I can still post in multiple channels if I wish. I could still make this into an announcement if I wish. Um, this is an announcement banner. So really very flexible, very full featured. Good news. And you can see everything is responding pretty snappy here, even when I'm currently using another conferencing software, such as GoToWebinar, uh, at the same time. So good news there. The other thing that I would like to mention outside of Teams is that there are plenty of things you can do in the browser with Office 365. In fact, some of the things are primarily in the browser. How do you be successful with that? Well, the first question usually is, can I use Safari? And for most things, yes, you can use Safari. However, this is one place where I will recommend to you that you install a Microsoft product here, and that would be Microsoft Edge. Uh, the newer version of Microsoft Edge is built on the same backbone that Google Chrome was built, but it has some improvements that will make for an experience that's much easier for you to deal with. Let me give you an example here. If I go to log in to office.com, I guess I'm already logged in here. Um, let's do this. Let me log out. You're probably familiar with the login process. But I want to point out how um, Edge can make this a better experience for you. When you're signing in, uh, and you sign in, you know, you get these choices to reduce the number of times. I'm going to say yes, don't ask me. Once you do this in Edge, it uses the Microsoft means of managing sessions and all these different Microsoft applications that are part of Office 365. You'll have a better experience where everything just works. Everything automatically logs you in as you move from place to place. As an example, if I go to Teams, already knows who I am. It will log in. These, these things just work smoother. It's not that they don't work okay, um, in Safari, but you'll find that there, there are less times that you need to tell it who you are and do a few of those things as well. Another thing to point out is that in Edge, we have this ability called Profiles. You can sign in. It will automatically sync um, your settings, such as your favorites, your history, the tabs you have open. Um, then if you use Edge on multiple devices, you can do that too. Uh, you can sync that and have access to all that stuff individually. The other thing I'll mention here is if because maybe you're on an older piece of hardware, maybe you have an older Mac, uh, Macs many times tend to last longer than a PC will. Um, if you're on one of those and Teams, the full application doesn't run well for you, um, that should be better now than it used to be. Don't give up on it. But if you're still having slowness or you're having problems, um, or maybe you're, you need to log into multiple um, tenants in Office 365. Realize that when you go to Teams here in the browser, here in Edge on the settings menu, you have this menu called Apps, and you can choose to install this site, the Teams site, um, as an application. You can give it a name. I'll call this Teams Lite. So puts it here in a folder called Edge Apps, and now the browser version of Teams is open in its own app window. Notice I get my own app bar up here at the top. Um, I can pin this in the dock. All those sorts of things happen here. So, And this is a really a pretty functional version of Teams here as well. Okay. So a good tip to have in the back of your mind. Get rid of these. What are some other things outside of Teams that you might want to do? Uh, well, let's talk about some of the applications. For instance, if I go to Outlook, again, it knows who I am. Edge is good at managing all these logins and, and states. It brings me into the Outlook webmail version. It'll load everything up. I'll dismiss these. Okay. Um, the Outlook webmail is actually pretty good. Some people prefer this to the desktop version of Outlook at the moment. It is not necessary for you to use the web version unless you don't have a copy of Outlook, but actually that's a good thing for me to mention before we go any further. Um, how would you install Office if you needed it? Well, what I would recommend to you 
is that you go to the Office homepage, office.com, and use the install Office that's available here. It is a large download. It's almost two gigabytes for you to download, but you'll get all of the applications that are part of the Office suite. Um, you can do it through the App Store as well, but you don't get as thorough or as wide ranging of an install there. You'll have more functionality and probably a better experience if you do it here as a means of installing on your Mac, on your MacBook or your Mini or whatever it is you're using. This is what it looks like in the browser. Let's talk about a couple of other things. Let's go to the Word application in the browser. That's another point I would mention is don't be afraid of the web versions of these applications. In years past, there was significant sacrifices you had to make in order to work in the browser. It's really less and less the case as things go on. Notice that we have up here the different uh, ribbon tabs like you would in other places. You can expand this a bit. So instead of a simplified ribbon, you can go to a classic ribbon if you like and have really a very similar experience for the everyday in and out things that you might do in the Microsoft Office applications. Nothing like typing with an audience, right? I still messed it up. Okay. If you decide that you do want to do this in the full version of Office, up here at the top, you have a choice to open it in the desktop app. Of course, you can also find that through the app launcher. We'll give it just a minute to open here. Notice the document opens up. I have the dark mode turned on in my OS, so you notice it automatically goes to a dark version of the document, but now I have the full and complete version of Word. A couple of tips if you are used to using Word on a PC and are trying to get used to this, one of the things you might miss is the ruler. Notice the ruler's not up at the top. If you go to the View tab, however, there is the ability here for you to turn that on. Makes it easy for you to adjust your margins and your indents and things like that. A couple of other things to mention. In um, in Word on a PC, you've got another tab here called File that brings up the big file menu with the backstage area. That's not here. You only have the Home button here, which basically is the original ribbon where most of the most of your tools and buttons are. Where you'll find the File menu is up on the Menu bar up here at the top. Notice you have a File menu here. Okay. It just doesn't put it in the Ribbon tab like you would in a PC. So a couple of good tips that help you in all of those office applications. Pretty good experience for these. Um, I will also mention here, we mentioned Outlook earlier. Outlook recently got a, a redesign with a more modern interface, especially on the Mac client. One of my friends that is a primary Mac user uh, really speaks highly. Continue later. Um, nice base for working here in the browser with this. So whether you like the full client or whether you prefer to work in the browser, either way, there are easy ways, very full featured ways for you to get this work done. A couple of other things for you to be aware of, for instance, let me, um, regardless of which operating system you started in, you may very well be fond of keyboard shortcuts. In Microsoft and Windows, we're fond of the control key, right? Uh, the alt key sometimes for things. Well, the control key is usually replaced by the command key, the one that kind of looks like a an X with the circles on the ends of it. So for instance, if I'm here in uh, a Word document, I want to print, that would be control P on a PC. This is command print, brings up the print dialog box here as well. So keep that in mind. Most of those keyboard shortcuts that you're used to using, many of them will be the same. You'll just use that command key instead of the control key to do so. Looking in our question problems, it says I get a Teams invitation in Outlook on my Mac, but cannot save the meeting details in the Teams calendar. Why? Is this a Safari problem? So you're saying that in Outlook, you're receiving meeting invitations here, but it won't show it in the Teams calendar. The most likely reason for that is that um, not all organizations are using Exchange in the cloud. Some of them are still hosting their own Exchange servers. That's been the most common reason I've seen that. It's, um, 
you know, so Teams calendar doesn't necessarily match the calendar you have in Outlook. Um, it's hard to know for sure without knowing more about your organization at the moment, but that's the most common reason I've seen for that problem. I'm not aware of a Safari problem that would stand in the way there, or a Mac problem specifically that would prevent that. Good question though. So lots of good things for us to look at. I'm trying to think if there were other points I wanted to pull out. Oh yes, permissions especially when you're working in the Teams application. Let me bring that back up here. Um, when you're working in a meeting in particular, let me go back into one of these. I forgot to show you this earlier, so let me show you where this is. When you're in a meeting, So when we're in a meeting, we mentioned there are some things here that you may want to do that sometimes you may not be able to. There's the idea of starting recording. There's the idea of sharing either Windows or applications. Sometimes the Windows choices will not be visible. Um, how do you get around these things or how do you make sure that you have the access to do these things? Well, remember, some restrictions can be put in place by your organization, by the admins at your company, um, but that would not typically be a difference between Mac and Windows. So if you're used to doing these things on a Windows machine and suddenly you can't, when you go to a Mac, there is another place you can go to look. Give me just a moment here. Here in System Preferences on your Mac, if you go to Security and Privacy, there are a few here that are important when you're working with teams or similar types of software. So first of all, you notice there's a choice for the camera and you can specify which applications are allowed to use your camera. The first time you try to do this in teams, it should ask you if that's okay. And as long as you click the okay button, it should set it for you. One minor irritation is that it will likely need to close the, the application, close teams and reopen it before you can use the, uh, the new permissions you've given it. Similarly for the microphone, you'll notice that is here. Some other ones that you might want to look at before you need them when you're in a meeting is this idea of disk access. Um, when you want to change here in the system preferences, you have to click the little unlock icon usually, but then you can pop in here and you can choose which things are able to access data uh, from these other applications. So having Teams as an allowed one to have disk access. Similarly, if you did not grant disk access, you might want to do this with uh, files and folders. Um, screen recording is another place. If you're wanting to share that desktop and if you're wanting to run the recording feature, um, these permission settings are important for you to grant. Again, Teams will ask you for this, whether you're doing it in the browser or you're doing it here. Um, but those are important things that you may need to check. So if things are not available to you when you're working in Teams, keep that in mind. All right, let me open it up to questions again. It looked like we had someone else that was typing a moment ago. Oh, it's just a follow-up from our question earlier about the Teams invitations. So, yeah, for that problem where um, you accept the invitation and then it, it disappears, um, it's likely a problem caused by some things happening in Office 365 and other things happening on your company's own server, I think is the most likely reason for that, as we mentioned before. Any other questions you have, I am happy to try and answer for you. Hopefully this has been helpful. These are the common things for you to be aware of. Again, just a review of the quick tips, the important ones. Remember your privacy preferences um, in the system preferences application in Mac OS. There are some important ones for there if you're going to be using online meetings with Microsoft Teams or even other applications for that matter. Uh, remember Microsoft Edge. I know it's a Microsoft product. If you're on a Mac, you probably are not thrilled with having Microsoft products, but it really does work well. Um, it is faster than Chrome. It has a better default security stance than Chrome. For instance, if I go into settings, you'll notice that 
in the settings app, privacy is the second thing rather than having to dig down into an advanced area. And by default, it doesn't put it all the way open. It puts it in the middle uh, for privacy settings. You can, uh, down at the bottom here, you, you can choose to use Google just like you want to other places, right? You can do that here as well, of course, Bing is the default, but that can be changed. There's really not a lot of reasons to not like Edge. It works really well. Um, another thing I will mention about the only complaint I hear time, from time to time from people uh, about Edge is that the close button is on the right side of the tab. Um, one other thing that some people like a lot in Edge is this idea for the vertical tabs, um, especially if you have a 16 by 9 screen, you have more width than you would otherwise. You may really like having your tabs show up over here. They can be minimized to icons if you like, pinned open, you can change the width. Um, Used for it. Some people really like this. I have kind of a love-hate relationship with the vertical tabs myself. A couple of other things I will mention um, is that if um, not a problem using Safari, most things will work just fine. You won't notice a lot of a difference in most things in Safari. I would recommend having Edge. That way, if you do come across something uh, that is that you are having problems with, having limitations, which you can switch over. And I would, again, just encourage you to give it a try. Even if you don't do it for your personal browsing, for your work browsing, you may really appreciate having that. Um, also makes it easy for you, remember, to share those things like history, um, bookmarks, and that sort of thing as well, even open tabs. If you do need to work in Windows, not very many reasons you'll be forced to anymore as you used to. There are a couple. For instance, if you're using a less common Microsoft product, not part of the actual office suite, something like Project or Visio, uh, you'll likely need to do that in a Windows machine. A um, couple of ways you can do that sort of thing. If I click up here, you'll notice that Parallels.com is a third-party product. It allows you to run Windows in an application window on your Mac. So while you're still running Mac as your main operating system, you can have a little Windows machine that opens uh, in an, as an application where you can run things inside it. A slightly less common way for people to do this type of thing is Boot Camp. It's a feature or supported way to do this on your Mac device where you can dual boot, right? You can, when you're booting your computer up, you can choose whether to boot into the Mac OS or into the Windows OS. There's also a new thing that Microsoft is offering called Windows 365, where you can get a Windows PC in the cloud for a monthly charge. Uh, the, again, advantage here was that you would be able to access that same PC from multiple devices. So if you have multiple Macs, you don't want to have setup and preferences and things like that that you have to keep doing over and over, uh, this may be a good option for you as well. So there are plenty of options for you Mac enthusiasts or you new Mac users that are looking for how to get work done. The experience is pretty good, pretty compatible, and there are, of course, uh, many options for different models and ways to work. Well, hopefully that was helpful. Looks like we didn't get any more questions other than that. If you do have some, feel free to type them in. I will stick around for another minute or two here. But that brings our webinar to a close. Thank you, everyone.